Um, you can see the, the title of, my, of our paper. Uh, as many of you know, I've always been uh, interested in the relationship between uh, what's happening physically with music, acoustically, and how we uh, as human beings per uh, perceive those things. Uh, so this, this project uh, had an interesting origin. Uh, my co-author, uh, Kata Jinnah, who's on the screen there, also known as Kasha, much easier to say, uh, is joining us. And it really was, was inspired by, by her in many ways. Uh, she had gone to, uh, a, I think, a, either a performance or a presentation of Katie uh, on Irish music. And um, so, so this is an example of Katie playing just a bit. It's a video, so it, it may not come through Zoom great, but I think the sound should be okay. So uh, we'll, we'll talk about it in a second. So um, Kasha came to me and said, well, there's something different about um, the sound itself at, compared to Western art music uh, and the Irish fiddle. And so we started talking and trying to figure out, well, what, what more specifically about the sound could be different? Uh, so we kind of narrowed it down to tone that we think the tone was, tone was different. So uh, we set up a situation where uh, we could compare, uh, let, me, let me go ahead one slide, uh, where we could compare the sound itself, the tone uh, on the same violin with the same performer playing both styles. So uh, we were able to find uh, a performer who was, who was proficient in both, sty uh, both styles and um, go back. And we had her play in the same room, use the same violin, use the same recording equipment, and so on. Uh, both a classical piece and uh, from uh, a Bach piece, Bach Jig, uh, and an Irish reel. Uh, those, that, that was her choice of, of literature. She thought those would be uh, somewhat comparable. So uh, before I share those uh, excerpts with you, very brief excerpts, uh, let me go back to uh, kind of the theoretical background for this, which, as some of you know, uh, Cliff and I in, at the ISME in 2000 presented this model of music listening, uh, which includes uh, discrimination, focus of attention, and emotion. We've talked about this several times before. The little squiggly lines with the arrows through them mean variable amounts, uh, so that some people might be able to tell the difference between uh, whether the music is on or whether it's off. Other people might hear a violin and say, oh, that's classical music. Uh, somebody like Ruth might hear a violin and say, oh, that's the Bach Partita number two. Uh, so there are very various degrees of discrimination depending upon one's, one's uh, training and background. Uh, and as an essential sine qua non of music, of meaningful music listening, uh, we thought it was very important to include focus of attention. What, what is it that people are paying attention to when they listen, if anything? And I suppose, Cliff, we could have added a variable degree here. Uh, people can focus to a larger or lesser extent, I would, I would guess, at some point. Uh, and uh, certainly, in order to have meaningful listening, there needs to be some emotional connection, all of which happens within some sort of cultural context. Uh, so let's go back to our project and we'll return to the model towards the end. Uh, so we're contrasting the uh, classical excerpt with an Irish excerpt, same violin, etc. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, same violin, same violinist. Different styles, different sound, different something. So we analyzed it, as I said, both acoustically and uh, musically, and also had some listeners uh, give us some feedback. Uh, the first line is the spectral center of gravity, which, which is an indication of uh, average frequency height, the average pitch height, if you will, uh, probably closely aligned with brightness. So the, the larger this number, perceptually, probably the more bright it is. Um, so the classical Bach piece was um, brighter perceptually than the Irish piece. Uh, the harmonic to noise ratio is higher in the classical piece, meaning that more energy was on harmonics of the of the uh, fundamental, uh, and the uh, harmonic to noise ratio was lower with the Irish, meaning there's more non-harmonic uh, signal, more signal strength that is not harmonic, probably from bow noise, from attacks, uh, from finger slides, and so on that that are not part of the harmonic uh, spectrum. And we'll, we'll see a picture of that in a bit. Uh, the intonation was comparable. The, the classical had vibrato, the Irish had none, the range was virtually the same, um, same octaves and so on, dynamic range was comparable, and there were differences obviously in uh, meter uh, and in ornamentation uh, and in double stops. So there, there were a uh, large number of differences. Then we had four experts, all of whom are, uh, had doctorates in music, two string teachers and two uh, musicologists. And these were some of their comments about the differences in sound. We asked them to focus on tone. Uh, so uh, these are a collection of other things that they happened to mention. We we, we, these categories were after the fact generated from their, from their comments. Uh, but on, uh, as far as tone goes, um, the Irish was considered to be, uh, both were considered to be resonant, but the Irish was more metallic and, and brash. Uh, the, there was more articulation, more accenting. Uh, other major differences was bow, were, that people noted were in the bowing, the accented bowing in the, in the Irish example. Uh, intonation was good in both cases, according to them. Um, there were lots of uh, extraneous or, or sounds uh, that were not part of the, the more uh, refined classical style. All right, then we did two examples of slow uh, music, uh, including Thais and, uh, or from uh, the Massenet and uh, a lament. got uh, a disparity in the center of gravity. The classical piece is, is much higher. And some of that is deceptive uh, because they're not playing in the same octave. And so some of that difference uh, has to do with, with the actual octave. And uh, we'll see that in a second in a, in a graph. A harmonic to noise ratio, again, the classical had more harmonic energy compared to the Irish. Intonation was all within 10 cents, the vibrato rate for the classical was typical for classical music um, and minimal for the Irish. And actually most of it was, was amplitude vibrato rather than frequency vibrato. Uh, and I said that the, basically an octave lower with the Irish. Um, the meter was different, it was unmetered with the uh, lament, with the Irish air. 
Uh, and of course, there are many more ornaments and double stops with the, with the Irish. So this is a, a spectrographic uh, display of the, uh, of the Massonet up here and the Irish down here. Uh, first thing you see is the lines are farther apart here, and that simply reflects that they're in, uh, this is one octave higher. Uh, the second thing you might see is the energy, the energy goes all the way to the top uh, here. And here there's a lot of open spaces where there's no harmonic energy. Uh, so again, that's a reflection of a brighter sound that's showing you the, that this has a greater brightness. And another obvious thing is the vibrato uh, display here, uh, where down here most of these lines are straight. And another thing to notice is you can actually see some of the non-harmonic energy down here uh, in the Irish version. There, between the between the solid lines, there's a lot of uh, lighter speckled, uh, spotted kind of lines showing the bow, showing the movement of the fingers on the string, and so on. So again, we've got the experts' comments. Um, the um, tone for the for the classical was was more resonant, was fuller compared to a more vocal quality, uh, gritty tone of the Irish. Uh, differences in in how the crescendos were were performed. Uh, differences in vibrato again, articulation, uh, meter. Uh, Again, differences in the bow as a, as a major difference. Hi, John, you're at two minutes. Okay, great, great. Um, so again, in summary for, for the first part, uh, the, uh, the differences were in uh, acoustical and uh, musically more vibrato for the classical, wider intervals, more disjunct intervals, less ornamentation, fewer grace notes, and double stops. So then we did a, uh, another study with a large number of subjects, basically to see if they could hear the difference between different styles. And we asked them, um, once they identify the style, what were the features of those performances that made them uh, decide it was that, that it was Irish or, or classical. Um, so, but first we gave them a, a, a very quick discrimination test to see uh, if they could discriminate styles. And we included, in addition to Irish and classical, we included some jazz and uh, old time, what we call old time fiddle music in, in the United States. Um, so the idea here was people can identify things perhaps without even, without even being able to verbalize uh, in, a, in a quick fashion what, what they're doing. So we started with a warm up, and everybody knows what that is, even though it may not immediately come to mind the title of that piece, but we've all heard that before. before except uh, especially if you're into British pop music from the 1960s, and if you don't recognize it, that's, that's fine. Uh, so here was one style. That's old time fiddle music. Everybody can tell what that is. That's from Western classical music, obviously. This was the ambiguous one that we threw in there just to uh, distract people. And in fact, that had the lowest identification uh, of any. That's a very brief snippet from Stefan Grappelli. And that's obviously Irish. So most everybody got all of those with some exceptions with the, with the jazz. Um, then we played longer examples and we had them uh, describe, as I said, they describe what was different about those, about those pieces, what made them decide it was Irish or classical. And this was the, uh, well, <laughs> Uh, 
So these are the words that, that these music students use to describe that, that Paganini caprice. Uh, technique, leaps, technical, virtu, virtuosic, I think that's supposed to be, uh, intervals, some even identified Paganini, uh, and so on. And we're Hello? about at time why don't you finish up that last uh little excerpt there and then chris will be our first question okay uh this was the fast irish or no that's not the fast irish that's the fast irish you can see the words they used for that there's the uh slow classical, vibrato, obviously, legato, phrasing melody. And here's the slow Irish, the ornamentation, notes, double stops, embellishments. Uh, those were the very, the most common words. So thank you very much. Questions?